Okay, read that Sir, book. You could go fuck yourself. This, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. Yeah. And with that, welcome back to Turbo Slag DX. <laughs> this is <laughs> <laughs> As always, this is Matthew, joined by Jeremy and Richard, a.k.a. Blue Rookie, a.k.a. That Big Dong. Anyway. We should just come up with different names from every single podcast we record. Just this is something just, different every time. the thing now. Anyway, guys, welcome to another episode of Smash Talk. Like I said yesterday, I want to go back to our... Was it yesterday? It two, was yesterday. Ooh, yesterday or two days ago, whatever. That we're trying to go back to our roots. Our channel uh, started with Smash Talk, and uh, since the new Smash Bros. was uh, revealed for 2018 on the Switch, we want to talk about it, because uh, it's hype as fuck right now, and I want to get on that. Uh, it's so hotness. It is the hotness. I can't wait, personally. Uh, so, last time we talked, we talked about if it was going to be a new game, a port, or something in between. And... Uh, Today we're going to talk about returning characters and returning mechanics, and ho- what we hope to see, uh, what will be there, and all that good stuff. Uh, before we get started, I want, uh, I want, I just want to say that we're a smaller channel, so if you happen to come across this video and you happen to be listening to us, smash that motherfucking like, like button, <laughs> smash share that like it. button, subscribe. share it all over social media, share Twitter, it. Facebook. And we are indeed a smaller channel, so if you if you want to be part of the conversation, you know, leave us a comment, and uh, we'll make sure to respond to you guys because. Uh, we get, a, we get all of, like, two to three comments every time we post we a video. We have nothing you, else you to make do. It, you make it seem Pretty like much. their channels don't respond. I mean, for the most part, they don't, Jeremy, but they still do. Well, the, listen, the, listen! The, the usual, kidding. like, the usual thing with other channels is, like, they're always, like, you know, mash that like button, leave a comment, let us know what you think, but they don't really care what they think. They just want to see the comment section, Phil. I feel like we're small enough that we can actually respond to anyone who leaves anything, so... If, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm a girl. I don't care what other people think. My opinion's my own. If you want to sit here, come at me with your own opinion and argue with me, a, I'll tell you. Leave a, a, on, a, on a real talk section, real quick. Not smash talk, real talk. Leave a comment. We'll get back to you. Anyway, you so today we're going to talk about returning characters and returning com- mechanics. Now, what does that exactly mean? We're not actually going to be going to character predictions as of yet, but we are going to talk about uh, veteran characters that have made it into multiple smashes and to see where they stand on coming back for a smash for Switch. So just to run you guys through real quick, we have, as of Smash Wii U and 3DS, we have Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, Yoshi, Rosalina and Luma, Bowser Jr., Wario, God, there's a lot of characters, Ducky Kong, Wait, Diddy Kong, to, I'm about to read everyone. He's about to read the entire Game and Watch, I, I can do it a little faster. Little Mac, Link, Zelda, <laughs> Sheik, Ganondorf, Toon Link, Samus, Zero Suit Samus, you Pit, know, we could, we could Palutena, Mark. I mean, you could. I, you are right. Could, I'm going to do that. You could just. I was going to say. You could just reference it in the video, or be like, you can look up the Wii U with three. So, so someone's probably look like at a, your screen. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> someone's probably like on the other end, like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like this motherfucker's about to go on for the next like 20 seconds about characters. I can't. Mm. Well, let's. Uh, so as as far as Smash Four goes, or Smash Wii U, I mean, some of the newcomers are to include Dark Pit, Lucina. And when it comes to third-party characters, we got Pac-Man, Mega Man, uh, Sonic, who's been in the past two games, so everyone thinks <laughs> he's going to be a... Uh, C-Loud. C-Loud. <laughs> so people C-Loud. think Sonic at this point is a mainstay in uh, Smash Bros., which I hope is true, because I like him as a Smash Bros. He, character. He might as well as be at this point. Mewtwo and Roy make their comeback from Melee. Uh, Lucas true. makes his comeback from Brawl. Ryu, mm-hmm. completely new. C-Loud, completely new. Yep. And unexpected. Bayonetta. Bayonetta, Banane. completely new Banane. and unexpected. Corrin, completely new, kind of expected with the... Uh, you know, with this game being Fire Emblem yeah. plus Smash Brothers and the Mii characters. Uh, I mean, we also got Dr. Mario back from Melee. Uh, yep. I mean, that's about it. Uh, Dunk Hunt's a new character. But, like, again, uh, like we said before, we're not going to go through... Bowser Jr., Cena, Greninja, there's, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of new characters. characters. You, can, you can look at the screen. screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at the screen, my guys. We're, I'm going to put an image up there, hopefully I remember. Drop it! Sorry. So I want to kick this off because last time we started off with uh, Richard, so I want to kick this off with Jeremy. Uh, who do you think, uh, when it comes to returning characters, who do you think is definitely going to come back? Uh, that's a, that's a, there's a, obviously the you have the main ones like Mario, Luigi, Bowser, uh, the, the Smash 64 Samus, games. like all those. Yeah, basically the the main roster from Smash 64 will come back, and to include 
Captain Falcon because I remember for a while people were just like, "Where's Captain Falcon?" When they were first showing off Wii U, the Smash for Wii U, I remember they were just like, "Where's Captain Falcon? Is he not going to come back in this game?" And he came back. Um, it just took him a while to to show him off. Uh, I think in terms of characters that will come back, like I think we'll get. And I, this is for me hoping as well, uh, Zero Suit Samus alongside Samus, because we always need more Metroid reps. I mean, Metroid being one of my favorite series, like by far one of my most favorite ones, games of all time. Uh, I think we'll get Zero Suit Samus back. She's a fan favorite. A lot of people like her. You know, people like looking at her for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. She wears that tight bodysuit. But we're not about. We're not about. Over here at Turbo Slick, we're not about sitting here and, you know. Uh, objectifying women. Anyway, respect. Uh, re respect women. Don't hit them. Don't hit women. Anyway, and except unless, unless it's smash. In, unless it's in smash. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> um, Ike. I think will make a return as well. You know, because he made his, he made his first appearance in Brawl. He came back in Smash Four for Wii U and 3DS. Um. And he had a little redesign too, which he looks like fucking guts, and he looks super cool, and he's jacked. Um, but I, I think he'll make a return as well, along with some a few other characters like King DDD. King DDD will come back for sure. Meta Knight will come back. Uh, I'm a hundred percent sure. King DDD and Meta Knight will for sure come back. Guaranteed. They're also uh, Sakurai's babies being a, yeah, a laboratory Kirby. Character, so. Anything Kirby related will come back because that is his baby. That is his that is his his series. Um obviously you're gonna get Fox and Falco. I mean, uh I wanna say Shulk will come back. I think he's he uh surprised a lot of people. And I think a lot of people like that. Like even though it's more of a uh Xenoblade is more of a niche title. So like I think people kind of liked him his inclusion. I think he'll I think he'll come back for another game. Um, I think we'll get m most of the Pokemon like Pikachu, Charizard, Jigglypuff, obviously. Lucario will probably come back. I honestly hope Greninja comes back because I really like Greninja. I liked playing him. I thought he was really cool. So I'm hoping he'll he'll come back for this new one. I'm not gonna go into third-party characters because that's that's a toss-up. We don't know for sure what's going on. Obviously, we hope, but I'm not gonna go into them. I'm just gonna talk about the the actual main core roster. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could care less about fucking Dark Pit. Fuck him. But Pit will come back, obviously. Palatina, I'm sure, will come back because they need more Kid Icarus, you know, characters. And that's another Sakurai game, by the way, Kid Icarus. Um, I believe it is. Is it? It was, yeah, it, it was. was. I'm not sure if it, like the original one was his, but I know the uh, Love <laughs> Uprising was his baby. Yeah, um, and then, you know that, that that's just me personally. Um, little, I know a lot of people wanted Little Mac in, and I'm sure he'll come back because he's a popular character. Personally, I don't. It doesn't really affect me. I don't care one way or another if Little Mac comes in or not because I don't hold any sort of attachment to that character. But I, I know people do, so I mean, I'm, just, I, I just want them to make people happy and bring all these characters. Like, I, I just want them to bring the entire roster back. That's just me. To, if you want them to make people happy, then uh, Shrek and Goku would be in this game. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want, I don't, I don't want. Don't get... For all those people, at the time of this recording, Funimation was just like, hey, Nintendo, you should put Goku in the game because they're just like, we want Goku in the game. It's just like, stop it, stop <laughs> right now, please. Nobody want, like, people want it, but you shouldn't. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Hey, so no. Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Shut the fuck up. No, Team Goku. I don't. I don't want Goku. Get that <laughs> motherfucker out my face. Take his ultra's instant gas out my face. Anyway, but yeah, that's just me. That's those are. That's what I, how I see it's gonna go. Um, I honestly feel like the whole. Honestly, aside from the third party characters, because like I said, it's a toss up. I honestly feel like all the entire roster will come back. In all honesty. All right, what do you What do you think, Richard? You got any You got any input on this? So, I, I'd like to pose a question to you both. <laughs> from the Wii U version or the Wii version to the Wii U from Brawl to Smash 4, who was actually left out aside from the Ice Climbers? We have the Ice Climbers, we have Wolf. Wolf, we Wolf was We have Pokemon in. Trainer. Yep. Uh, that's to include... Uh, Squirtle and, Bull and Ivysaur. Yeah, Squirtle and Ivysaur. Charizard, the birth them out of that in this game, made him his own character. Uh, Lucas was DLC. Yeah, he was. Damn, that's a good question. That is a good question. Well, um, yeah, that was keep, keep stalling for time as I find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I say that 
or I ask that to say this. It seems like a good many of every character that's been included has been included into the next series. From 64 to Melee, from Melee to Brawl, from Brawl to Smash 4. And some of the characters that didn't go from Melee to Brawl kind of inched their way into Smash 4. So with this being a better system, I wouldn't see why they would, you know, kind of toss any characters to the wayside. I would say they may include some as DLC, but I can I can see almost every character in here, aside from some clones, uh, returning. Um, I wouldn't see why anybody would be kept out unless they are third party. Yeah. All right, so clone Snake. Snake was oh, yes, in but Snake was four. third party. Third party. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. To run through uh, what I think. Uh, this goes back to our first topic, where the game was gonna be, where we discussed that the game was gonna be a port or some, or a new game of some sort or a 4.5. And I think, I honestly think, like, since I'm a firm believer, if it's gonna be like some sort of like 4.5 or like uh, Smash for Switch, that I honestly think every character is gonna make a comeback, and they're gonna add a few on top of that to, you know, to justify these the new price tag. And uh, I know that's, I know that's a pretty big uh, stretch, for, at, at least, especially with the third party characters. But I mean, like, like, like we said before, the you know Cloud being in it, Ryu, uh, Sonic, and Mega Man Bayonetta, it, it would just be a shame to get rid of all of them. And who knows what kind of deal Nintendo struck up with these, uh, with the other developers like Capcom and uh, Square Enix. Like, who's to say that they were all restricted to the Wii U? Like, maybe, maybe uh, Nintendo was like, hey, man, we got this other console coming up. We're probably gonna port this game over to it or do something along those lines. So we're probably gonna throw those characters in as well. Also, unlike uh, a good many of fighting games that are coming out now. Every iteration of Smash has been consistently including more characters at launch. You know, you can look at other game titles such as, uh, you know, that that one thing that Capcom has that they won't let go of. They released that with like, what, 12 characters at launch or something like that? You talking about Street Fighter Five? Yeah. No, Street Fighter Five had um, 16, I believe, at launch. Okay, but then you, look at, launch. you know, you can look at Street Fighter Four at launch. And it definitely had more characters. I and think then, it had 16 as well. And then I'm not sure about the third Strike series because I, I came on the very ass end of, of that life. But you know, it, it, it's always been it's been like they've given you they come in they give you more characters just to take them away as soon as the next uh, next game in the series comes out. But Smash has been very good about including more characters every iteration that goes past. You just have to unlock them. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah. even then, like, I, I would definitely play the game to unlock them as yeah. opposed to paying $20 for a season pass and getting one every 45 days. See, you, you say that, and I agree with you, but at the same time, I'm, I'm hoping Nintendo somehow turns Smash Bros. into, like, a games of service where they're like, every so often we'll give you another character or something. Because, like, I bought all the DLC for Smash Wii U because I love Smash with a passion. Okay, and I understand that, but even still, like, if you were to if you were to lock someone like Akuma behind story mode, I'd be happy with that. And no. if you made someone like Zeku with DLC, yeah. that would make sense. But to put Akuma, Sakura, uh, who uh, Blanca as as DLC, you know, some of the mainstays that have been here since you know two and three, it, it just doesn't make sense. No, no, I agree with you on that point. I'm just saying, like, I hope. They do what you say with the whole, like, oh, they're keeping the roster re relatively big and they're giving it to you for, quote-unquote, free unlockables during the game. Right. But I was like, I'm not opposed to them doing that and making uh, Smash Brothers like a games of service kind of deal. See, they, they, keep uh, it, they keep it going, because obviously the Switch is going to be here for another, like, at least four to five years. Right. I think the reason that they do that, a lot of that, um, like, with in, in terms of, like, characters, uh, is because sometimes, like, I, I, I know Nintendo, they do their own thing. Sakurai does his own thing, and usually he brings in, like... It, uh, he does whatever he wants with the roster because it's his thing, and he brings old returning characters back. But like, when it comes to other games, I know they a lot of the time to like they they usually try and um they limit the roster due to balancing reasons because if you have a lo a larger roster doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. Like yeah, it's nice because you have all these different characters and variety, but at the same time, it's just like. You don't know what the what what in terms of balance or what these characters can do. Uh, like look at look for example look at fucking uh, look at fucking Marvel two. Let's take Marvel two for example. Fifty fifty fucking fifty six characters, and like how many of them are viable? How many of them are actually worthwhile using? They're well, most that's because of the game of Marvel two. 
Like, that well, yeah. is built around infinites and assists. So people are going to, you know, tier whore, look for the best assist, look for the well, best of course. anchor. So, and you can still play, like, all game. those characters. You can still play all those characters. Right. But, like, at the end of the day, like, when it, like, because it always comes back to, like, competitive and it's not going to apply to nintendo because mm -hmm. nintendo like and sakurai doesn't care about the, the competitive aspect i mean they know it's there but they focus more on like just the game itself mm -hmm. but like people are gonna you know look for what's strong what's good you know and it's like i mean I, I, there's something even, wrong with there's, there's something wrong like with smash you you can like you can play a character in a different way and, and still have it be you know valuable as like, if I were to enter as Pac-Man, you know, nobody would be like, oh, you know, Pac-Man's trash, but then you come in, you know what you're doing, you know, yeah, you can, of course. you know, upset the competition, whereas a game with assists, it's like, this, you know, I'll take Fighters, for example, everyone knows that Vegeta is, you know, damn near the best assist in the game, like, and he's gonna be a good staple, and, like, you could look at, like, we'll say, like, the top 16, I guarantee you he's gonna be in half of those teams. Yeah. And that it's just a different fighting mindset from Smash. Like literally, it's it's character based. Just knowing your yeah. character and how to how they. Well, function. of course, that that's a factor is player skill. Player right. skill is always a separate thing away, like from the whole like how strong a character is or character matchup, and that's always a thing. Like there's that's why there's a there's a video there's a guy that I usually follow. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug him right now. I hope you guys don't mind. I'm plugging him, but he made a video on it, and like it makes a lot of sense. And it's um, his channel is called. Uh, hold on, give me a minute. I can't even remember. Look at me. I'm bad. I'm terrible. Um, Core A Gaming. Oh and yeah, yeah, I follow Core A. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Core A, and he usually does a lot of different talks on these things, and he he also talks about Smash as well, and includes it into into the topic, even though most of it's FGC related, fighting games like Street Fighter, Tekken, all that stuff. But he includes Smash in it as well, and he talked about that for a while. I know we're kind of going off on a tangent, but I'm going to end it here. Is basically he's just saying player skill is separate from tiers and characters like care how strong the character is because you can like you, there's always that low tier warrior that sits there and plays like i don't know some character that's on the bottom of the tier list and fucking destroys people with them but either way that's neither here nor there like i get like what i was saying about the roster is like it like i get them wanting to you know bring in more more characters and smash does does consistently do that with each game they do bring more characters to the table and that's always a good thing especially for for what they're trying to get go for which is to get more people get all you know get more people into the series especially all the diehard nintendo fans like and that's they, they succeed with that by adding all these characters and, right. i mean it makes sense well you gotta you also gotta look at it if it's, uh if people follow the theory of it's a port or a 4.5 then, you know, bringing all these characters in, like, like I said, it's a stretch to have the whole cast of Wii U come to Switch. But to bring all those characters in, I mean, wouldn't it be that big of a deal? Because they already have, like, a sense of balance. I mean, the game's been patched, uh, Wii U's been patched plenty of times to get rid of certain, uh, balance issues when it came to a lot of characters. Meta mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I'm not too sure about Meta Knight, but, like, Fox had, like, this, like, double jab, like, uh, I don't want to say infinite, but it was, like, you, you can build up, like, 80 to 100% with it because it, it just locks you in. Mm -hmm. And that's been since patched out. And uh, Sakurai has said that, like, you know, with the Wii U, and I'm guessing he's going to follow that words with the new one, that, you know, they'll continuously balance it or anything like that. But, like, like I know a lot of people say that like, Sakurai doesn't really care about the competitive scene. But at the same time, I mean, like, uh, games like Marvel 2 that you brought up, like, there were, that game was also made, like, in a rush because uh, Capcom was losing the... Oh, well, yeah, they, they so, literally like, pulled characters from every game up it, until yeah. Marvel and they just threw them in there. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure there wasn't much... Uh, I don't want to say quality testing, because it's still a fun game. Like, it's not really that broken, per se, but, like, it's it has its issues. And, uh, but, I mean, like, if it's, like, a brand new game, then, it, yeah, I can see, like, the core uh, roster being a little bit smaller, and then, like, uh, as time passes, they'll add more characters, but the balance and everything will be a lot better. As long as, as, long as the base roster has more than the base roster of Smash 4, I think I'll be happy. Because if they pull, like, you know, this whole Capcom thing where they're like, yeah, we had, let's say, 30 characters in Smash 4, but we're only going to give you, like, 18 in, in Smash 5, but we're going to give them all back plus more with DLC. It's like, we, I, I need, like, publishing companies to stop doing that for, for game, like, you know, trying to stop, trying to peg, you know, their consumers for every last dollar. Kind of like how, uh... 
Blaze yeah. Blue across battles doing right now with like half the damn roster. No, see, I I'm okay with that game because their base price is forty forty dollars. Yeah, and you know you pay forty dollars for the base game, twenty dollars for the DLC. That's sixty dollars, which is the price of a regular game. So, but if they were charging full price, uh, that'd be an issue. yeah, if they were charging uh, full I price mean, for the base roster, I would definitely have a problem with it, especially since they've already come out and said we have this many characters as DLC coming out. Like that would tell me that you guys are just looking to peg the consumer. See, I don't know, with that, I get that. I, it for forty dollars thing saved it, yeah. But honestly, like you're you locked half a roster away as DLC, well, especially you know, they're, especially they're cons- it out for for Evo, so. Yeah. I get that, but especially considering like you have all these like you have Blaze Blue, the Persona, and the the Uniel characters, but then you have fucking two 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 Ruby characters in the base roster to start. Like that's kind of I don't know. T- to me, like that shit rode me the wrong way, and I I get what they're doing, but at the same hey, time, man, you it's get just the like you got to pay for the B. Like <laughs> at the same time, it's just like come on, man. Like you're gonna like you knew what you were doing before the game even went gold. Like you sat here and like decided to lock away over twenty. Like well, yeah, I think it's twenty characters. Twenty characters, like half the rosters, the full roster size that you want to go for as okay. DLC. We're not, we're uh, not here. The, the yeah, the I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, I'm just, I'm just saying. So I'm gonna move on to the next point. Uh, this still retains the returning characters. Uh, do you think any characters that are returning will have any significant changes to them? Oh, and yes. I'm gonna bring up, and I'm gonna bring up one example yes. of Ganondorf. Oh. Right, well, no, ahead. no. I, I was just saying. No, I'm. I'm just making an example. Like Ganondorf, like for example, he's been in three Smash Brothers so far, and he still retains that Captain Falcon moveset. Like a lot of people, a lot of fans have been screaming for him to have his own thing, give him a sword or some shit. I don't agree with the whole give him the sword thing because like more than half the roster no. has a sword. Yeah, but, so that. that's the example I'm making. But do you think any characters coming back will have a significant change? Yes. Elaborate. I'd like to say, the Ice Climbers will come back. Fuck the Ice Climbers, and I hope they get rid of that goddamn wobble. That's all I have to say. I mean, he kind of got rid of it in uh, in Brawl. I mean, there was like a different way to do it, but it was like still kind of there, but it wasn't. Like I said, we don't claim to be any sort of professional at this game. We're just uh, we play casual as fuck. So, but uh, what do you, what, Richard? I want I want to besides the ice climbers because I know you you hating on the ice climbers right now. What else do you think any other characters get a significant change? Um. I'm hoping there'd be some more distinction between some of the uh, Pokemon characters, especially with uh, Lucario and Greninja, since they kind of play similar. And then, who is it? Lucario and Mewtwo kind of play similar? Well, if one is to believe that Lucario was a Mewtwo replacement, almost. uh, He was. For Brawl. He was supposed to be considered like the Mewtwo replacement for the new generation. And then, of course, when Mewtwo comes back, I mean, they they kind of, they, they have enough differences, I would say. I mean, they both share like the shadow ball or right. like, the charge, and then, but other than that, Mewtwo, I would say, is and Lucario, nothing alike. Mm. Besides that, I mean, I'm I'm casual, so they're exactly well. Lucario like also them. has his own like mechanics too. Like he gets stronger with more damage he takes. So you know. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. So what do you what do you think, Jeremy? Uh, I think it'd be a good idea to when like a lot of returning characters because some characters have had new games since since smash 4 yeah. so like one for partic- in particular that i i would really like that stands out to me is for samus um since they came out with samus returns on uh, 3ds she has this new mechanic in that game she has this counter where like if an enemy is attacking you you can encounter them and basically what it does is she does this like little fucking crazy uppercut slash thing with her hand her cannon that like knocks them back and allows you allows you to you know counter with your own attacks. Um, I feel like that'd be it'd be perfect to implement something like that. Like I know people like I don't know how they would do it, but I mean considering most characters, a lot of characters in Smash have their own counter. Uh, something similar to that, like you can include that into it and allow her to like you know maybe do her little aiming and actual use the cannon to shoot as opposed to just doing charge shots all the time but that's like that's like a, a perfect example and a perfect like thing that they could do with samus just to i mean give her something new because for the most part she's been the same aside from having different design changes i mean they should also change up her design give her the samus returns look as well i, I, I like to say especially with samus uh they could do some of the uh, project m implementations 
um, where her taunt gave her sort of a stance change, oh, if you will. She can alternate between the different missiles, right. so like ice like missiles. Ice, yeah, like her, some of her regular A moveset also changed as well with the uh, um, ice moves, so I think I think that would be interesting. I, I, I mean, I, I preferred Samus on Project M for that reason. Yeah, implementing different her uses of different like all her different weapons like wave beam or like the fucking plasma beam or whatever the fuck like yeah. that shit like that would be cool if she could switch between like actually switch and maybe kind of like Robin where like you can you have a different spells and you right, go back and right. forth like give that to, give something like that to her where she could alternate between her move like her move set like, and her all her different, different weapons like kind like I they kind of do it with like the missile so you have the missile and if you tap it. In, at the at the same time as you hit the B button, you get super missile. But I would also like to see them do that, you know, with the different the different beams that she has. That'd be cool. That's a good idea. I like that. But other than that, I mean, implement. I, I mentioned it in the previous podcast, but like with Link being Breath of the Wild, Link fucking give him some shit from Breath of the Wild. You know, you have that. What is that tablet called? Because I haven't played Breath of the Wild yet. Sheikah Slate. But, yeah, the Sheikah Slate, like where they have all these different things you can do, like that. If you want to be more creative with Link, because like that's his whole that's his whole thing is, you know, he's got all these different weapons at his at his you know um, disposal. Give him some, give him a bunch of new tools to mess around with, to, you know, to to change up his playstyle. Even like, I mean, not completely change it up, but give him something different. You know, so, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be dramatic. Just a new move or two. That's all. That I'm saying. Said, what uh, what are some of the main differences between Toon Link? And regular Link in Smash Four. So Toon Link, different he, uh, His uh, his his dare, or his down air, uh, shoots him straight to the ground. It has spiking properties, but he will not like. Even if he hits somebody, he's he's going hit. He's hitting the ground first. Like he's not. He's not moving. Bouncing or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he has the boomerang. He has the hook shot still. He has uh, he has uh, bombs. But his bombs don't cause as much knockback like like uh, Link's. Bombs can kill like at like 90 percent, hundred percent. Doesn't his doesn't his boomerang act differently too? Yeah, his it's boomerang the same. doesn't have like the gale effect where like mm. the wind comes out. Mm. It's just a straight up hit. Uh, his uh, he has the he has a normal bow. Young Link had a uh, had the fire bow. Okay, but it, yeah, he has a normal bow, the uh, Toon Link, and you can charge their uppy. He has the uh, the two hit uh, smash four, so does Link. Uh, his his neutral air or his nair is uh, he does like the forward slash and then the back slash. Mm-hmm. Link has like that kick, almost like he kind of kicks forward mm-hmm. when he does his. Uh, their I th- believe their back airs or their bears are set are different, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, and, and like Link does- when he does his when he does his dare, it can cause a meteor strike, but it doesn't cause him to like just shoot straight down. Doesn't Toon Link have a different forward smash as well? Like he kind of leaps forward, no, Link, or is that, uh, that Link has the, when Link when when Link is dashing and he does like the A attack, he like jumps and then slashes. Uh, two Link just slashes. Oh, okay. And uh, with Link, that can kill two at like 100 percent or whatever. But uh, with Two Link, it doesn't. But they both still have like the the four uh, four smash, like one slash, two slash. Okay. One, two, three, four. So uh, <laughs> I had asked that because. I wanted to see if there are any major differences between the the two. Uh, with this coming iteration, since we do have Breath of the Wild out, and we have Young Link, I think we could find some of those properties retained in Young Link and then replace Main Link with Breath of the Wild Link. Um, that way you still have your fans who are happy who play Young Link as opposed to Regular Link, and then the Regular Link gets an upgrade with the Breath of the Wild moveset. Well, I'm kind of hoping that uh, with Breath of the Wild Link, that uh, because he had two different kinds of bombs in uh, in uh, Breath of the Wild. One was round and one was square. Mm. So the round one was obviously meant to roll and stuff like that. Square one will throw it and it'll like maybe topple like once or twice and it'll sit there. So I'm hoping like they do something with that where like, hey, like I can place this bomb right here and like not worry about it or some shit like that. And like, or I can throw this one and it rolls at you or some shit like. Because like with uh with Link and Toon Link, you you pull the bomb out, you throw it, it hits the ground, it explodes unless something like stops it and it kind of like sits there. I'm not entirely sure what the conditions are for that, but like I'm kind of hoping with this one, it's just like, hey, you throw it, and it will just like kind of just keep rolling, just in case like they're too far away, or you can, because you can also detonate them too. Like you make that choice to detonate them mm-hmm. in uh, Breath of the Wild. So I'm hoping that's like kind of a thing, but uh, I, I would imagine they'll hold like roughly the same properties. With uh, Breath of the Wild Link too, you had an array of arrows, just like regular Link. Uh, you can get a fire arrow, you can get a bomb arrow, you can get uh, the 
ancient uh what the hell what they're called the the, the guardian like arrows like uh the ones that are i, I want to say they're essentially the light arrows in this but they're uh they're like one of the most destructive arrows and then uh i mean link had like he still has like some standard combos in breath of the wild uh you know a few slashes here and there but he did use an array of weapons so i, I highly doubt they're going to incorporate that at all like with different weapons i hear people talking about i'm hoping they're joking with the whole like oh maybe what if his like sword breaks and he brings out another sword no don't touch that mechanic like that'll be stupid it's kind of like kind of like with uh robin and his and his elbow yeah, or whatever say, like when he uses well that's that's a book too yeah his that's, a, book that's just that's a fire emblem thing where you have limited uses on weapons well i'm that's saying a, that's the thing that's, that's a, the thing with breath of the wild too though like you can't just use a weapon the whole game it will yeah, break but, on you I get that. Leave that. I think that should be a thing that should stay with Robin and only yeah. Robin, because that's yeah, a yeah. Fire Emblem thing, and I get why they did that with Robin, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Another, another thing I would kind of want, and I'm not entirely sure how they're gonna implement it, but like, uh, they, ne they never really touched the whole like. Remember in the old old Zelda games, like the, the overhead ones, like if you had full health, you would like shoot the beam out of your sword. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, like, kinda yeah. Hoping, like if you like maybe had like a full like four charge or some shit, like a like a beam will come out or like a slash will come out, like kind of like. Reminiscent of uh, clouds like blade beam a little bit, like a little, like just a tad. Yeah, like they give you that little... extra umph when you fully. Yeah, charge. but how, how yeah. would you? How would you? That's what I'm saying because you, you obviously you're gonna take like one percent and then it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Speaking of all these different moves, we did mention something on a previous podcast about of a new move, like with Mario and Cappy as well. Like I said, with that, um, get rid of flood for Mario. I mean, I know there are some people that might like flood or whatever, but I think they could at least in order to keep it fresh since like i said we we're talking about new moves or new things to these characters to change them up since the new games have come out get rid of uh, flood add in cappy make them do something have them do something that's you know relevant to that i guess and, and even uh, with that though like there are two marios so you could essentially yeah keep flood and just update dr mario or you know maybe give flood to dr mario or something like that make him like all you know mario eccentric moves and then have uh cappy mario as the new main mario yep see but i'm a i'm a firm believer if if dr mario is going to come back or there is going to be two marios that like one of them should almost stay like similar to the original mario with the whole like mario tornado beams down b and stuff like that like i don't well, know what you're saying and like it's a cool idea but like because i i agree too like get rid of flood give cap give him make down b like cappy or some shit like that or like, uh, cause even like the fireball, like make his standard be like him throwing Cappy forward or some shit like that. That could have the same properties of the fireball and yeah. just like use Cappy instead of a random fireball. But you know, like, that's I, I like the idea of like Doctor Mario being like melee Mario, where like he, if you mash the Mario tornado, he gains some height when he's trying to right, recover. Right, right. That's like that. that's what I was gonna say. I thought that's what the whole appeal of Doctor Mario, at least in Smash Four, was. Whereas he's more like traditional Mario from fucking. Uh, from melee or even 64 where you know he's got all his old moves if you want to play mario like you know from previous iterations bam there you go you got dr mario so like you said yeah i think that's a good thing to do with mario himself is like you could change up his move set almost not completely drastically but change up some things here or there be it the fireball or his down b be it, you know neutral b or down b give him cappy something you know I mean, like, um, it's not like the first time they brought back an older character from, like, Brawl and, like, changed the most significantly. Like, it's... Because even, like, Zero Two Samus got the... She got, a, like, an actual real upbeat recovery. Yeah, yeah. And, like, before, yeah. it was just a tether. And the tether, like, could either work for you or it can be terrible for you. So, I mean, like, yeah. it, it's nice to see those those changes. But, uh, Pit... Pit had significant changes between Brawl and, uh, and the Wii U. Yeah, he got uh, a whole new, uh, forward B. Yeah, he got, he got, like... And he didn't... And then one of the mechanics they got rid of, which is another thing I want to talk about in a few minutes, is uh, mechanics that were returning, is that uh, they got rid of gliding. So, like, uh, characters like Meta Knight and Charizard and uh, Pit, Charizard, Pit yeah. could, um, like, always recover as long as he, like, didn't die because they could just glide. And that, that was, like, this, like, someone did, like, a video of, like, Charizard flying all around, like, Hyrule Temple. And, like, I was <laughs> like, bro, that's ridiculous. Like, why would you, like, implement this? They didn't really get rid of swimming because, like, it's still in the uh, Toon Lake stage of... Uh, is it is it the it's not Rooster Teeth uh Rooster Teeth, <laughs> it's not the uh Dragon Rooster Dragon. Island. It's uh, no, it's, it's the, just the it's, boat. Like, but it plays like the music half the time. It's also they also have water in Delfino Plaza as well. Yeah, the so they, need, they need to get rid of uh, which one called? They got rid of tripping obviously because that's fucking stupid. Uh, but when it comes to like characters returning, they get like significant differences. Uh, Key Captain Falcon the same. That's like that's that's the captain. That's Falcon, him. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, you I, can't I change agree him. With you about about Gandalf getting some character-centric properties. 
they kind of did it a little bit from from melee to brawl, where they gave yeah. him unique shit, and then I think even well, no, they kept him I think roughly the same from uh, brawl to to four. But he became like more a few... of like a powerhouse in like brawl, if you ask me. Like he was a little faster in melee, and then he he, well, he got like significantly slower, but significantly stronger with each like new smash. Yeah, and that's that's fine. I think that they should work off of that. Make him the slow fucking powerhouse. Like you don't have to sit here and like I guess like you don't, you know give him all kinds of crazy shit. He can still like be like his move set can still be a base of Captain Falcons, but change it up a bit, a little more. You know. I mean, I feel like it's fine. You know, with his aside from his regular B being you know Captain Falcon S, the fucking... his forward B is you know his dunk is. You know, Android 16, like, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to <laughs> yeah. kill somebody, that's the way to go. Yeah. Um, his up B is kind of, kind of different. Oh, I guess. His down B was the, the kick, right? Yeah. 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 I, think, he, okay, I so feel like they I can mean, get rid of that. He's definitely Captain Clone. Yeah. I mean, the 4, I, 4 B, especially like the air type, I would say keep it, because that dunk is yeah, the dunk. Yeah. 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 His down B could probably be changed. His, uh, everyone loves the Warlock Punch. I mean, like, I, I mean, yeah, it's that cool. the Warlock it's Punch is the thing. Like his, uh, but his then up it, tilt? Yeah, I was gonna say beastly. his up tilt though. <laughs> it's it's beastly. I, I fucking love the person. So good. His uh forward B, his forward uh no his uh forward tilt B in the boot. Keep it, I would say, because like Captain Falcon doesn't have that as far as I know. Captain Falcon does like a like a little low roundhouse kick. Uh, I mean other than that, I mean like you can change some things up. Don't give him a sword though. Like no. I, I feel like enough characters in Smash Bros have swords. And especially with all the Fire Emblem characters being in it. Oh yeah, like that's like. And, all right, let's going on. let's find out. Uh, you, I mean, let's see how many characters exactly have swords. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, uh, seven. What else we got? Uh, eight, nine, uh, ten, eleven, twelve. You already hit one twelve. For the roster. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of characters with swords. I remember there was a picture someone posted when Smash Four came out, and it was a circle graph, and it was just like punch characters, sword characters, and then it was like other, and like the sword care, so the sword character just like took the majority of the fucking circle. It was ridiculous. Like, <laughs> it, it it was it's crazy. I mean, like, I I mean, I guess no, not Palatina. She doesn't count. But yeah, it was like a, it was a ridiculous amount of characters have swords. Like you said, we don't we don't need Ganondorf to have a sword as well, just so he can have another generic so he can have a generic move set. Now that's stupid. We don't need that. I mean, even uh, I mean, I believe at this point because uh, I'm gonna try to wrap up the returning character section, uh, unless anyone has any more. Input. But I think at this point we have a few new characters to the roster that are pretty much mainstays, and that's to include Wario. Uh, Zero Suit Samus, obviously. I forgot <laughs> Wario was even a character. Yeah, uh, I think Bowser Jr. is here to stay. He's unique enough. Rosalina and Luma, uh, <laughs> they're like the low poly uh, ice climbers of the 3DS version. Because they were like, oh, we can't have eight things running around on screen because the 3DS can't handle it. But yet you have Rosalina and Luma, Rosalina and Luma who are two independent characters at some points. But yeah. they, they made that work. I don't know how they couldn't make the ice climbers work. I believe Dunk Hunt is here to stay. Uh, I hope, and I, I don't know how many people are going to agree with me with this one, but I kind of hope Lucina gets the can, because we kind of don't need another Marth. Uh, see, clone. I was about to I was just about to touch up on that. It's like, I, as much as, and you know how much I love Lucina. Like, I love that character. I like her a lot, but honestly, we could do without her. Because yeah, she's, she's, she's literally, like, literally, like, there's, there's Ganondorf who has things that are different. There's fucking Lucas that has things that are different from Ness. And you know, Doctor Mario, different things from Mario, but like she's literally just well, she's literally just female Mars. Smash Smash Wii U, uh, with, when it came into the Fire Emblem character, especially uh, Roy, Lucina, and Marth, suffered from what Broth suffered from, and that's the uh, that's the Fox, Falco, and Wolf thing. Yeah, like they're yeah. all clones of each other. I mean, given Wolf was diff in my opinion, was different enough. His his move set was changed completely different. It's yeah, like he was different enough, different. but like I feel like the, that Holy Trinity is just like the Holy Trinity. Oh, when, they, you. when they brought Roy into four, didn't they change some things with him too? Like he doesn't do things exactly the same. He has the four. He has the four B combo still, uh, just a little more meteor. Uh, he has the four smash still, just a little more meteor. Uh, he does. He he has the old school Marth like B charge attack where like mm -hmm. he slaps it down as opposed to stabbing. And he does and that little scream. Ha! He uh, 
His up B is still roughly the same, only that it has to add a fire slash damage to it. Doesn't uh, isn't I, what I what I meant? I guess more so is like animations are different for him. Like moves are probably relatively the same, but aren't some of the animations different? Like his up B, isn't it different? His up his up B like uh, is not as vertical. I guess you can say It's like kind of like a slant. But yeah. other than that, it's like still roughly the same. Uh, mm -hmm. His final smash is different from Mars at least, but. It's still like the whole like oh if I touch you it's gonna do like the whole fire moment like damage meter thing and then the critical hit out. yeah uh and uh, I don't know if you guys are gonna agree with me with this or not but I'm gonna say anyway I think I think Sonic's actually a mainstay of Smash Brothers I mean he's he's the only returning third party I, character that that was here since Brawl I I agree I think Sonic is I think Sonic is here to stay with Smash especially since like they have this Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games thing like like yeah, he, it, it seems that this for Nintendo it for seems like at this point, Sonic is just now a dedicated Nintendo. Not completely dedicated, because obviously he's going to be on other systems. But I feel like Sonic is just like now considered a Nintendo character, and he's just going to be on in every Smash at this point. Like, there's no point not to have. Like, there's no reason not to have him. Yeah. You know. And I, like, and I and I hope uh, honestly, like uh, I I didn't use him too much, but I hope Mega Man's like one of those characters they bring back and kind of like every time they whip out a new Smash, they're like, Yo, Capcom, like coming out with a new Smash Brothers, you know, like. Let us uh let us get let's that get... Uh, Mega Man real quick and uh... Let's, uh you know what I'd like them to do um I'd like them to do that like bring Mega Man back but I wouldn't mind seeing them bring back different versions so like I would love to see EXE like I know we had we had EXE and Onimusha Blade Warriors and that was cool but like oh yeah, yeah. forgot about that. yeah, yeah. and they had, had zero too too. they had zero they had zero in Onimusha Blade Warriors as well but I would love it if they brought EXE back it, if they brought EXE in the, into fucking it's a smash because like think of all the shit that he could do that character's got so many possibilities so would you like, recommend uh the implementation of different Mega Man's, uh like the teenage mutant ninja turtles in injustice like where each costume has different abilities oh what well, you're you saying mean, like you can separate you can characters? i mean like separate separate characters because like in injustice they have i know you could pick your pick your your turtle, right. but they each did they each did different things and had their own different special attacks. I they had like uh, at least like the same normals and like no, they they have so, well they they have maybe some of the same normals, but they have their own unique trait and they also have their own unique like special moves. They don't have all the same moves. Like for example, I know nothing in injustice. So you're mine. In injustice, like straight. for example, Leonardo in Injustice Two, he his whole gameplay is centered around him calling, like his trait allows him to call the other brothers in. And then you look at Raphael, his trait is something completely different where he can... Uh, it has something to do with, I think, his dagger or his psi. I don't remember. I gotta go look into it again. But they all do something completely different. So I would honestly... I mean, that's something they could do, but I feel like that's a lot of work that they probably wouldn't want to put in, especially well, for Sakurai. Well, I just don't... I, I don't want it to be like they use all these assets for, you know, three oh, different of versions of Mega Man when they could just make it a different... I mean, even for Bowser Jr., you know, he if he changes costume, he changes character models. So all the different Koopa, Koopa right. kit. Yeah. It gets to the point, too, where, like, even the crowd, like, screams their names and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that that wouldn't be a bad idea, just, you know, different skin with different things for Mega Man. Uh, uh, that wouldn't be too bad. I, I'm just I'm just gushing, because I would love to see EXE in Smash, personally. I'm surprised you uh, skipped right over X. Like, I thought you would have... I like... I like... No, I love X, but we got, we got him in Marvel. He had his moment. I feel like we should give some of the other Mega Mans that didn't kind of get the moment. Even though, like, I'm kind of thinking too far into the future right now, but I was like, at least with, like, each new Smash Brothers, like, okay, you make my classic, you had your thing, now it's X. Okay, X, you had your thing, now it's like, I'm not going to say Zero, because Zero's probably never going to happen. But, like, oh, it's... Maybe not even Trigger, because like Trigger wasn't really on 64 unless you count Mega Man 64, and that was a good version of that game at best. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, EXE, and then like I really hope they don't go into like uh, Star Force, because I fucking hate Star Force. But that's just me. Star Force wasn't bad. It's just it, it, wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't Battle Network. Yeah, it wasn't, it Battle, wasn't Battle Network. Network. It was trash. Like they had something that worked with Battle Network, and they're like, let's change it up by adding 3D environments and restrict you to three fucking platforms. Ah, fucking, I love Battle Network. That's. I'm, I'm plugging it right now. If you haven't played Mega Man Battle Network, like, if anyone listening, go play those games. Those are good games. All of them. Every single one of them. All six of them. <laughs> and, but, uh... Yeah. I mean, like, the other characters that are probably most likely going to stay in the series, DDD and Meta Knight, I feel like they're going to stay. Uh, Lucas is probably going to come back. Hopefully not as a DLC character, but if he does, he does. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, uh, aside from the third party characters, I, I can't even see Bayonetta coming back because honestly, with, with Nintendo's uh, relationship with Sega right now, and with the whole Bayonetta being a uh, Nintendo uh, exclusive game now, yeah, I, I can see it coming. You know, back. speaking of mainstays, because I never really got to get out what I wanted to say before, uh, um, there's two particular characters that I, I hope be continue to be mainstays. One of them being the villager, because you know Animal Crossing is always going to be a thing with Nintendo, and We Fit Trainer. Uh, I personally like We Fit Trainer a lot, and I feel like I, I mean was gonna get to them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I was gonna get to them too, but you guys like brushed right over me in my point. But anyway, but yeah, I, I, those are two characters I, I I think will definitely be mainstays. But go on, man. No, I mean, like, I mean, that's pretty much all of them. Uh, Robin, uh, Sheik and Zelda being two separate characters. I understand he split them for like the 3DS reasons, but just keep them separate. Like, you know, speaking of which, when you said Robin, um, I feel like what they should do is you should obviously have your typical um, Fire Emblem mainstays, like Marth and Ike. I feel like you could do without Roy. I don't really care about Roy. Well, I mean, like, um, Roy, like I like Roy. I prefer Roy over Marth, but like, I, I kind of agree. Like, if we're gonna have should, like those kind of characters, like keep Robin, but keep them all separate. Well, not not just that's not necessarily what I meant. What I was trying to get at is like you keep your mainstays like Marth and Ike. Um, so like this, you Smash Four has Corrin. They introduced Robin because at the time. Awake, Fire Emblem Awakening came out. Like came out, I think a little bit before that, and it was like a really pop. It was like the the Fire Emblem game that put Fire Emblem back on the map. And I, I played Fire Emblem Awakening and loved the fuck out of that game. Beat it. It was a really good game. Um, and then you know you got you got fucking Fire Emblem uh, Fates that came out with Corrin. But what I feel like they should do is if they like in the future for future titles, this isn't necessarily like I guess in, like, it does tie in, but you don't necessarily have to have Robin as well in every game. Just bring in like the main character from that that you know most recent Fire Emblem game. So like Corrin being in, I think is a good is a good fit until like I guess the next Fire Emblem game, if there is another one that they come up with, bring in the main character. You don't need to bring back all these returning these returning Fire Emblem characters, except for the two ones that people really like, Marth and Ike, and I guess Roy. But I don't really that, me personally, I don't want to see Roy come back. He's our boy. He may be your boy. He ain't my boy. Damn. Ike. Though, I like Ike. We all like Ike. We like Ike. But go on. Okay, so I want to move on to the next uh, next part of this. Uh, probably a little shorter than the returning characters one. But this is more towards returning mechanics. I wrote it down as features, but that's wrong. Uh, so what I mean by returning uh, mechanics is... So when, the, when Wii U came out, they introduced uh, edge trumping. So if someone's already holding onto the edge... And someone else tries to grab onto it, it will actually knock that person off of the edge, and uh, they'll like slightly jump back. And at that point, they'll lose like their vulnerability and stuff. They'll be open for attack. There's can no longer the, uh... can no longer be Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're right. right. <laughs> there's also uh, there's also rage mode. So after you take a certain amount of damage, your character will start to flash red and stuff like that. And there's actually more knockback and more damage output when you're in this quote unquote rage mode. And, uh, you know what's funny? They implemented that when they brought um. They brought Bandai Namco into the scene to, to help develop yeah. this, and that's a thing in Tekken. <laughs> yeah, so like, I that people people feel like it was actually uh, that that feature was actually uh, what's that? What I'm looking for? Uh, influence uh, directly influence, influenced. Yeah, influenced by Bandai Namco, like, and Bandai Namco was like, hey, put this in. But there's like side by side comparison. The videos are like, oh, what happens when you up smash Bowser at this damage, and when you what what happens when you do it at this damage, and there is a significant difference. And then there's yeah. like you know other. I guess I guess this counts as a feature, like eight player smash and all that good stuff. Uh, so, what do you what do you guys think? Is, are you, do you think Ed Trump, Ed Trumping is gonna come back? I, of course, I think that's like a, a thing now, like a main thing. Yeah. Like, I think that should be a thing because like edge hogging in previous games, like it wasn't like it's something you can get around, but it kind of solves a lot of problems. So like characters who have poor recovery and they're trying to get on, like. Typically, if there was nobody at that edge, they could probably make it back on that edge. Like, look at Little Mac, for example, with his terrible up B. Like, he, if there wasn't a character, like, if, if he was in melee or, like, brawl, if he had used his up B, like, when someone was hogging that edge, he would not have got on. If there was nobody there, it, the game would have probably, like, auto-corrected him onto the ledge so he can grab it if he was close enough, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of uh, grabbing ledges, there's been a there's been talk in the community, or uh, a f I heard a few uh, people who I follow bring this up, and they're uh, quote like we call it quote unquote magnet hands. So when you go to recover, if you're like within like five feet of the ledge, 
your character will like zip to it and grab it. Do you think that would be like more finely tuned in the next one? I think that's definitely character specific. Um, I don't want to get into like any any details as far as like Reach is concerned with the length of characters' arms and whatnot, but. You know, there there are definitely some characters who just have that feature. You know, um, just like with uh, uh, tethering. You know, some characters can just use that to their ability because that's the mm-hmm. way their character functionality is made. But I, I don't think it's going to be a widespread implementation across the board for every character. Just you know, for the sake of giving everyone magnet hands, as far as fairness is concerned. Hasn't that been a thing for since pre- in previous games? No, like them apparently, just according got... to a few people that I watched, I can't really point anybody right now. Uh, is that apparently this is actually an issue with uh, Smash Wii U with the uh, whole like, because uh, like if you look at it realistically with some of the ways you quote unquote magnet hand, if uh, if you're close enough to the ledge to grab it, you'll grab it. Right. But there's some situations like especially with Mario, where like you're in the vicinity of the ledge, but like there's no way his like little stubby arms are gonna reach it, and then like he will kind of like zip to it. Yeah, and like if apparently that is yeah. an issue with this game. If that's the case, then yeah, they should probably fine tune it at least to make it a little more balanced around all characters, so that you know it works equally. Because that's the kind of thing that should work, I think, should work equally amongst all characters. It's not like, you know, frame data where like this character has different frame data or this character has different frame data, you know, and then you know you want to balance it so that they have like similar or close to similar. No, like this is something I feel like this is something like you should. You should definitely fine tune for all characters yeah. to have and some like we're not some sure sort if it's of like is character yeah. specific or it's just like a hey if your character's within the, these amount of pixels of like this ledge he's gonna grab it no matter what but uh it is definitely like uh, I want to say like it obviously if you're the one recovering it's not an issue for you but like if right. you're like oh they're not gonna make it blah blah and they're like zip and they're like there like you're like what the fuck and I'm like. Well, here at Turbo Select DX, uh, our co-hosts are free to leave and do whatever they need to do. <laughs> With the power of editing, yeah. we can bring you in and out <laughs> as we please. All right, Black all right. So, I mean, like, I, I feel like we talked enough. Uh, I think we've been going for more than forty minutes. Uh, so, to to bring to, re, to recall what we just said, uh, I know it's a better word for that, and I can't really. Come on, man! You didn't even sit here and go around the table about uh, the mechanics. No, Um, I can't think of it right now. I'm gonna get it as soon as we're done podcast. I'm gonna be like, "That's the word." But uh, yeah, we talked about returning characters, not necessarily uh, character predictions. Just like returning characters from the already existing uh, existing uh, roster, and we talked about a few mechanics that we feel may or may not return or Mm. or mainstays to be. You talked about it, really. I mean, like, do you have more input? I mean, there's a few things. I mean, ahead, tripping. Yeah, bring, bring back tripping. No, I'm no, just kidding. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Podcast over. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there's not really anything I can really add to in terms of mechanics. Like, I mean, is there any mechanics you would like to see come back from like older ones, like uh, melee or brawl or? No. Um, I don't fucking know. <laughs> you know. To be honest, I think that speaking of mechanics, I think characters should be rewarded at higher levels of damage at not dying because you know you had your uh you had your your motherfucking smash button what was that thing called the the big button that flew around and everybody tried breaking the smash ball yeah so i think that should be instead of that being an item i think that should be rewarded especially when it comes to like tournament play i think that should be rewarded to the character you know after a certain amount of time has elapsed and they've been alive in this stock for maybe like a minute and they've reached like like 170 50 health yeah something like a meter you know, and they haven't died. Like, I think they should be rewarded for that. Because Smash is the only game that gives you items for characters in game that they don't want you to use. And I think that's that's really that's really strange. Like, when you look at the competitive aspect, anyway, like you have all these you know 70, 80 different items, but not one is able to be used in um in competitive play. So instead of making that an item, you know, make that a feat, you know, like across the board a character feature like he's got his meter that could be used as like a reversal or something you know like a super or something like that i I think that's something that would be interesting to see especially when you go ahead no i was just gonna say i like i like the idea of it but at the same time i feel like that would be too strong um 
Because well, I mean, you... super, because like a, a final smash is more like a, it's like a, it's if it's more like a wild card thing, where we, it comes out randomly and like anybody can get it. That way, it's kind of fair. Or you, you can know? give it, you know, you can make it two tiers, something like an EX move as opposed to a super move. So your rage like, move, rage drive. Well, let me uh, imagine you imagine you're in a match and then you have this one strong player and they're consistently doing well and they're consistently getting it back to back. You know, like. Well, I feel like. I feel like if they were to do something like that, and that's actually a good idea. I think that's actually a good idea because it's kind of true. Like final smashes are just there for the quote-unquote casual items on uh, non-final destination, blah blah. But like, if they were to do that, they'll have to revamp a lot of final smashes because there's characters like Mario who have the one and done. You know, he's like, oh yeah, and shoots that fireball, and then like, if you get caught, you get caught, you're you're gonna die. But there's also characters like, let's say you're doing well with Sonic. You go supersonic. The transformation Gosh. itself can knock you out, and then you're that standing that transformation ridiculous. for like yeah. twenty something seconds, and you can use it when they recover with their next stop. Fucking zip zopping, zoobity bopping all over the screen. Zip bopping, putting pills in everybody's drinks. But uh, anyway, <laughs> it, the if they're gonna do something like that, you 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 gotta limit it. Like, if it's gonna, it, it has to be like it can only apply to one character. You, it can only be used to kill one character or to and, knock out one character. Again, in my like, opinion, you know, it would it would be like the difference between EX moves and like actual supers. Like, you know, you, you don't need a full like a full. Like, this is gonna kill you if I hit you with it. It's just like, like it could it yeah. could turn the table. Like I think it's I think it would work, and I like that idea with like what you were saying. Where kind of like EX moves, like if they made it like a, a sort of EX move, so kind of like a powered up. Say like I don't know, you knock someone in the air, and now you you've got enough of it. Or enough meter built up, or whatever, so you can upgrade. Like you can um, improve one of your own moves. So like, this you knock the dude in the air and say like you're you're Fox and you're going up going for your up your up air your up A, and like you can enhance it to make it even stronger. Oh, we, it kind of make saying, it like a cool finisher. Are we saying because like there's already a character that technically already does this? Are we like talking like something similar to like Cloud's Limit Break? Where, like, something yeah. similar. Something but similar see, Cloud, to that. Cloud can do that with like all his moves. I mean like. Like, okay, what Jeremy was talking about, changing Samus's regular charge shot into, like, a wave beat, you know, something a little bit more upgraded um, that'll do a decent amount of damage that they don't normally have access to. Yeah. Like, all of Cloud's moves, he, he normally has access to, except for... Uh, okay, let, let's say he didn't have that, and he got his, like, meter. Now his blade beam becomes the powerful one, or his 4B becomes the powerful one, or his up uh, B yeah, becomes yeah, exactly. the big ass one that in, zips in that across. Case, yes, exactly like that. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like, that just turns every character into Cloud now. I mean, it's oh, fair. Well, like, to be honest, like, if you, like, that's the one thing I never really liked about Smash, and it, it falls for a very small amount of characters, especially DLC, like, Cloud's already good enough as is. Why would you give him a mechanic where he can charge himself up? And make himself better. Like you can't even do that with Little Mac. Like Little Mac has to get his ass kicked before he gets his uh, knockout punch. Yeah, I was gonna and say like Cloud. <laughs> Cloud builds his limit while getting hit, and he could charge it himself. God damn. Yeah, see, like, yeah, I was gonna say because you can't even charge that shit in there in his own no, game. Like, like Little Mac, you, you're you're easy at 80 to 100 damage before you can use that KO punch. Or uh, I mean, you can build it if you like, you know, t attack too. But that's like you attacking. That's like that's like risk and reward. Right. Like with Cloud, it's just like, oh, you hit me, my limit went up. You hit me again, my limit went up. Let me press down B and charge my own limit. And then when he gets a limit, he can, like, kill you instantly or just use these other limit attacks. And it's like, like, I was like, all right, all right, Nintendo, I understand you want people to buy this DLC. I understand people like Cloud, but come on, like. Hey, they had to give him some unique feature, I guess. Like, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's just like, it's like, even if, like, with this meter uh, theory or whatever, like, if, uh. Sonic does go Super Sonic, but he can still get hit and stuff like that. But like all his attacks are like amplified for a certain amount of time. I'll take that over. Like, uh, oh hey, uh, I killed you with my transformation. Now I'm gonna be transformed for another 20 some odd seconds. So let me flip around and try to hit you. Right. To be fair, I don't think Sonic should go Super Sonic at all. That's just you ridiculous. Should go Hyper Sonic for his final and right. Super Sonic for his meter. I mean, even if it's he like, even if it's kind of like V Trigger, where like everyone has like something specific to themselves, Ooh, but it's something different. V Trigger that's, being that's an mechanic. interesting idea that you just brought up v with the Street Fighter. V Trigger is a mechanic in Street Fighter that gives every character different properties for yeah, special but it, moves. but it's it's particular to them. Yeah, it's a unique V. All right, for those who aren't in know, like like Richard said in Street Fighter Five, V Trigger 
once once you acquire enough V meter, you activate. It's kind of like instinct from Killer Instinct. If you don't, if you if you might have played that, where you activate and your character goes into a very specific mode or phase or whatever, where they get either amplified properties to their moves or they have you access to new new moves or anything unique, and and you know once they activate it. But you that kind of really, you can't really give them new moves unless you replace the old moves, you know, because this isn't like a command game where you yeah, can down, down them. Them. yeah, like yeah, their their move set would have to be replaced, and I don't think that would be. You say it's not a command game, but Rio disagrees because you can still oh. it's been put, you can still input, or right. you can. In- All right, for in- one, for one, you can put the you can put the Hadouken in for Ryu, but I, I still think as a casual player. That's bullshit because I'm trying to do something with the A button. I get a Hadouken instead. I'm like, why didn't they just map it to the B button? Like, why could a, why could his special moves be attached to the special move button? Like, yeah, I feel yeah, they man. definitely should have done that. Like, I don't know why they made it A and B. Like, because I understand like higher rank players are like, oh, I can control this easily. This is not a problem for me. Right. But for someone like me, I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to do like an up smash and I hit hit right slightly beforehand and I do a fucking Shryukid or some shit like is that. It, I'm like, isn't, isn't it like it's stronger if you do the actual input? If you put yeah. if you do the actual inputs, it's stronger, but it's mapped to A or B. So it's mapped to your standard attack and it's mapped to your special attack. So yeah. you can accelerate and do it if you're just trying to do standard attacks, which I think is bullshit. That's just me. That character's great. I love him in Smash. (laughs) Challenge. (laughs) Challenge. So we've been going on for quite some time. So just to... uh... So we're talking about returning characters and returning features. We would like to know what you guys think. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and we will get back to you guys in our next video shortly before getting into our top. And I mean that sincerely, genuinely. Blah, we're a small channel. We want to interact with whoever watches us because that's how we get out there. And we want you guys to know we got we want you guys to know that like unlike other big channels who are just like, oh leave these comments and they like they're just saying that just to say it. I will literally look at this shit every day until I get something and then the next topic I'll be like, we're gonna address this person real quick. We're gonna call you out, we're gonna give you your name and everything. You're stupid. No. 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 no? It's mean. Oh, talking to me or then? No, I was talking to the person who's gonna comment in the future. But... Uh, you're not stupid. Oh. We appreciate you. <laughs> Unless it's a stupid comment, then Unless it's, it's stupid. A stupid <laughs> comment. <laughs> but you know, like us, subscribe us, please. Look us up on Facebook. I'll, I put the links in the uh, in the description each and every time. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. We literally have like a few views per video. So if you happen to come across that video and you're like, hey, I don't agree with that, or I do agree with that, this, or this guy was wrong, or he was wrong, just leave a comment. Let us know, and we'll address it next time we. Uh, we make a video uh-huh. so this has been matt jeremy and blue rookie aka richard aka big dong dong city aka whatever you want to call him <laughs> from turbo select dx uh you know next time next episode we're going to talk about uh we're actually going to make our character predictions i know there's a lot of videos out there on youtube about character predictions and all that stuff and i want you guys to kind of like go over nintendo characters or even like third party characters who you realistically can think make it I don't want to hear no fucking Crash Bandicoot just because this game's getting on the Switch. I don't give a fuck. But, uh, you know someone's going to talk about that Everyone's shit. talking Go- about that. Gonna Crash! Talk about that. Goku! <laughs> Spyro! Uh, Crash and Goku are the only legitimate... Better keep that damn Waku Waku mask away from my fucking... <laughs> Bro, Spyro's <laughs> another <laughs> one. Spyro's another one that's going to come up. You know Spyro's going to come up. <laughs> Alright, we'll wait for Spyro to get his fucking uh, remaster first. And then we can <laughs> yeah. But I want you guys to have fun with it. I want you guys to like look up Nintendo characters. A little homework for you. Just look up some Nintendo characters, third-party characters. And uh, what would you like to see in Smash uh, on a realistic uh, kind of thing? And we I'm can call, talk about I'm, clones and more unique characters and stuff like that. So just, I'm calling it right now. There's going to be somebody that's going to be like, I want Gino from Super Mar- from Mario RPG. Calling yeah, it. Because people have been doing that since fucking Melee. Wasn't he in like one of the like Nintendo like Mario-themed basketball games? Uh, like the DS or some shit like Gina was in one of those I think. It's a good question because I don't remember. <laughs> I I'd say it sounds in, uh, What was it? In NBA Streets when Mario, and Luigi, and Peach made it. Uh, that was like their Smash Bros. That was, <laughs> the, that was the selling point for NBA. I was like, you man, I want a game GameCube yeah. because Volume Three has Mario. In that it. was their. That was like the NBA Streets like version NBA of Smash Street Brothers. Volume Three. <laughs> who, who do you think is gonna make it? Solid Snake. <laughs> 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 I mean, he was in that. He was in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, so there's that. No, he no, he no, wasn't. He had, a, he had he his, had his own, own skin. Oh, yeah, he had the yeah. mini. He had the mini game. No, in, uh, his... in subsistence, or no, uh, the, whatever the no, second no, one was I... called. Was it subsistence? It was subsistence. It was Metal Gear Three for for Xbox. They threw that in there. Oh yeah, it was for yeah, Xbox. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember but that. But I, I forget now. if it's okay. called substance or subsistence. It's subsistence. For for if it's for if it's two for Metal Gear Solid Two, that's substance. If it's three, that's subsistence. Okay. 
Okay, it was just, yeah. Fuck you, Konami. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Making shit confusing and shit. But yeah, that was like their Smash Bros. Like, who's gonna make it in the GameCube version? I hope I get Mario, Nikki. <laughs> you getting Mario? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for listening. This is Turbo Select DS signing out. Appreciate it. Gonna poop. Hey. I still can't work with that Jeremy, man. He's just a fucking. Fan. <laughs> 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 All right. All right.